I'm Beth. Welcome to episode two of Pandemic Knitter. I'm here to talk to you about all of my knitting and crafting and mostly fiber-filled adventures. And um, I am a teacher's aide living in the north suburbs of Chicago. And this is my summer adventure. So I'm going to be recording weekly and posting weekly. And at the end of the summer, we'll see where I go from there. This week, I'll be talking to you about Finish It February. Finish It February is something that obviously I started in February. Maybe not so obvious. Um, at any rate, uh, Roxanne Richardson does something that she calls Finish It February. And I believe she hosts a group on Ravelry. And personally, I'm not into social stuff on Ravelry. I, I prefer to do Instagram for all of the social stuff. And I'm not real active there either. However, Finish It February is a project to decide of your whips that you've had that have been languishing for some time, whether you want to finish them or frog them. And I have seen other um, knit-alongs where people do other things. Forget it or fix it. But for Roxanne Richardson's purposes, it's finish it February. <laughs> the first thing I finished was this tank. This tank is called the Streamline Tank by Alexandra Tabble, who is also known as Two of Wands. I'm going to go ahead and get up and give it a twirl so you can see it and how it fits and everything like that. So, this is the front. It's got a nice split hem. And I'm going to move a little closer. Walk around my chair so you can see the detail, which this is really cute. Now, with this project, I had, this is, it's exactly the same on the front and the back. Um, there's two pieces, you knit two pieces exactly the same, and then sew up the edges and then the, um, the shoulders. That's it. Um, it is made from Lion Brand Kobu. This. Um, I actually had bought another set because I think my daughter was going to make it too. Um, but I don't think they make this anymore. This is a blend of cotton and bamboo. And, um, I like the tank itself. I think it's really cute. Um, it is a lot more cropped than I like. Um, but it turned out well. And I'm happy with it. Um, the next thing I finished for Finish It February was the Lillian cardigan. This is also, side note, on last week's episode, I mentioned that most of what I did prior to the pandemic was to go to the Lion Brand website and find projects that you get the free pattern along with the yarn. So this one was that, and this next one is also that. Um, the Lillian Cardigan, also by Alexandra Tavel, Two of Wands. And this one was done in um, Touch of Alpaca, Lion Brand Touch of Alpaca, which I, 
I could probably find a yarn band and maybe I'll put it on the screen here or something, but um, it is, there. there's alpaca in it. I'm sure there's some acrylic too. Um, but again, this was one of those where I had all the pieces done for a long, long time. And I just never got around to sewing the pieces together. And so that's why I needed to have something like finish it February to inspire me to finish it. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that, put it on, give it a twirl. So this is another gigantic sweater. And I say another because um, last week I talked about all of the lights, which I gave a twirl last week. So I'm not going to give that another twirl today. So it's hard to see the bottom of this. Arms up. So this is super cozy. Um, I, I could wear this to keep me warm all winter long. This is, the, and the, the touch of alpaca, it's, it's super soft. Um, it's like squishy and bouncy. Um, I will say my finishing leaves something to be desired. So like, for instance, here's the seam on this sleeve and here's the seam on this sleeve. They look different. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I'm, I'm not real happy with the way, like this looks very crooked to me and I don't know. I mean, I used the the finishing technique that's always recommended for this, is it blanket stitch? It's something stitch, mattress stitch. That's it, mattress stitch. And I, when, when you have, what it is is up here, these are um, short rows. And so when you have short rows that you're trying to make into a straight seam, I had a hard time getting the seam nice and even. So, I mean, I know I could always undo this if I ever learned some new technique of how to mattress stitch on two uneven pieces. Well, and I shouldn't say that. They're not uneven pieces. The pieces are even. It's making them look even. Because <laughs> really you're looking at an edge that sort of stair steps down. And getting that edge into a straight seam is what I had difficulty with. So anyway, that's the Lillian cardigan. I'm taking it off because it is warm. Um, the next thing um, that I finished in Finish It February was All of the Lights by Hohi Locatelli. I did talk about that one last week. I showed it in very great detail. So if you're interested in knowing more about it, please feel free to go back to last week's episode and take a look. Um, but what I want to tell you about this as it relates to Finish It February is that I did finish the sleeves in February. So that was, you know, that was one that was stuck on Sleeve Island. <laughs> and so I did the sleeves in February. I finished that off. And then from February, all I had left to do was to sew down the pockets. And so last week before I recorded, I sewed down the pockets because I wanted something to show on my weekly episode of Pandemic Knitter. <laughs> so um, 
that I will grab it just to show it. This is all of the lights. I did it in um, the Fiber Company Aaron Moore Light and the colorway is Audrin. Isn't it beautiful? I love these colors. And another thing that I did as part of finish it February was the tote that I showed last week. I had crocheted most of that in the month of February. Um, I had started it well before it was maybe a couple of rounds up, not a couple. When I say, I'll, I'll even, I'll, let me grab it. It was sections, a couple of sections up. So I had the bottom done and then I had done a couple of sections of spikes, um, which is each round I think is six. I mean, each section is six rounds because you have, you have to go down six rows in order to pick up a stitch to make the spikes. So anyway, um, this was another one that was languishing in my pile of whips for a long time and I finished it. And the last of the languishing whips that I had to complete for finish of February was the daisy top and that one I showed last week and I had tried it on and gave it a twirl and um, I did decide to finish it. I finished it yesterday. Um, this morning I put it on. It's super wet still. I mean, it's damp, um, too uncomfortable to wear. Um, so I gave it a twirl for the camera, which I will insert here. And um, I'm not sure if it is bigger because of the dampness, but I think maybe I'll let it dry and and try it on again and do a little twirl here once more and um, that may be what I end up putting here um, and maybe I'll put both up you can see here's the wet one here's the dry one <laughs> um, so Daisy is a pattern by Natasha Hornby um, I made it in Moondrake Merino Linen in the colorways Toffee and Pink Salt. And um, I really like how this feels because it's a very light fabric. I think it'll wear nicely in the summer. Um, I do think that I'm probably going to have to wear something underneath it because I kind of feel like it's going to fall off my shoulders if I don't. Well, it's going to fall off my shoulders even if I do wear something under it. But um, I think that if I were to do it again, I would probably do it in the next size down. Just because I think that would, that would fit better and probably not fall off my shoulders. So that's everything for Finish It February. Um... What I am working on right now, wait, let me double check my list. Yes. <laughs> what I'm working on right now is I am still working on that whip that I showed last week, which was free by 
Ms. Ulrich, um, whose first name I don't know how to pronounce, spelled V-I-B-E. I would imagine it's Vibe? Vib? I don't know. I'm sorry. If you're watching, which I doubt you are, I apologize for butchering your name. But um, I just want to show, I, I put a, um, a marker in where I was last time. And so I am now several rows more on it. This is being made in Rowan cotton cashmere. Um, and it is from, I'll insert a picture because I did not bring it up here, but it's from Rowan magazine number 71. And it is um, the yarn that was suggested for the pattern. So um, I think that's other than Lion Brand, that's one of the few times that I have used the recommended yarn for a project. So um, right now with this project, what's slowing me down is a mistake that I made a few rows back. And I don't even know what I did. Um, maybe, you know what? I'm gonna look at this <laughs> on the video and it's probably gonna jump out at me. I don't know what I did because I either have one extra stitch or one too few. And I don't know what I did. And I've dropped down. Um, I, I At first I dropped down two rows to see if I could figure out where things went wrong. I couldn't figure it out from there. So I went two more because the twists happen every two rows. Um, so I couldn't figure it out after dropping down four rows. And I really hope that I don't have to undo more than that. Um, but at first when I thought it was two rows, I thought, mm, I'll go back, I'll undo those two rows. And then when I didn't find it, in those two rows that I dropped down. Um, I thought I would drop down four rows. I'm just, I, I don't want to have to drop, like undo the whole length. Because all I've done right now is just take that section and pull the needles out on either side of it and drop down to try to fix it. And I, I don't want to have to undo frog back. Not looking forward to that. So that's my, that's my free dilemma. I'm not feeling so free with it right now. And then last night, I got this wild idea that I needed to start a new summer top because I don't have enough summer tops that I've knitted. And I have a ton of them that I have marked as something that I would like to do. Um, so I went through because I knew I had this yarn. I'll show you this. I love turquoise. Turquoise, I would say, is probably my favorite color. Um, I don't know what it's called, but I can find it. Silky wool. Uh, designer's choice silky wool. Oh, Elizabeth Levold. It looks to me like that's not focusing. I gotta put on my glasses to see. I know I just looked at this the other day and saw what the makeup was. I feel like. 
I remember seeing 45 per oh there it is there it is okay 45 percent wool which does not say superwash which you can really tell when you touch this this is um it's not silky smooth like superwash 35 percent silk 20 percent nylon um so I had gauge swatched this for another project a long time ago and it ended up not working because I needed more of a, a finer gauge than um, what this is. Um, this is a heavy fingering and I needed a light fingering for the other project. This, you really can't tell much of what I have done on this project because it is this big, but you may be able to see that I have some twists in it. It is um, the, the design that I am um, making is called Summer Meadow. And I am so newly doing this that I have not even got a source for who the designer is. I know I can find it. I don't know. I'll put it in. You'll see it up here. Um, so those are my works in progress. Um, I'm probably going to be working on socks some more because I need something that's more mindless because this uh, tank top takes focus and so does that um, free cardigan. So we'll see where I go with projects this week. I, I'm not going to have a lot to show next week. Anyway, I'll talk about that in the chit chat part later. So, new to me this week, I have been busy ordering stuff on the internet. So, from Nomadic Yarns, um, I have, it is, 200 yards of, can, I can't tell if that's focusing. Shoot. Okay. Twisty sock, 200 yards, 50 grams, 80% superwash, 20% nylon. And this is a self-striping yarn. So it has lovely turquoise and royal blue and I think there's some like a it looks like this strand is like a sky blue so all kinds of blues in that so I can't wait to see how that knits up I bought two 50 grand I had them cake it for me so I bought two 50 gram cakes and that way I can just do two at a time socks. Um, Nomadic Yarns also does them in um, 100 gram skeins. So I just chose to go with 250 grams so that I didn't have to split it apart myself and find, you know, where's the start? How do I match the stripes and all that good stuff? I'm letting them do the work for me. So those will be socks. I don't know how soon. Then I also got this. <laughs> I'm just looking at everything around me right now and everything is shades of blue except for except for this. <laughs> Do I have a color palette you think? Um so this I saw this 
on Instagram. I don't, I don't remember, um, when I saw it. I feel like this was a, no, this is not the pre-order. There's something else coming that was a pre-order. And, um, I saw this colorway and I thought, I need that to make a summer top. Now, unbeknownst to me, when I was thinking late last night about starting a new summer top, this was sitting in my mailbox. I could have started my new project with this. But I had yarn that has been sitting around in my house for probably over a year that I decided to start with. So I did have a specific top that I was planning to do with this and I don't remember the name of it, but I'm sure it'll come up in the next few weeks. Um, it is, um, I, I feel like it had spaghetti straps on top and then um, was tighter fitting on top and then like looser on the bottom. So like a line ish. And I think that it's held together with a strand of mohair. And I have some blue mohair. So I'm going to have to pull that mohair out and look at it together with this yarn and see if I like the combination. I just realized that I haven't even said what this is yet. This is Bumblebee Acres Fiber Farm Bubble Sock. And this is a um, superwash merino silk blend. It is 80% superwash merino, 20% silk. And it comes in a three and a half ounce um, skein for 400 yards. So um, I'm excited to figure out what this wants to be. So that's all the stuff I have to show you this week. But I do want to bring you up to date. So last week I kept talking about how I had no air conditioning. It was supposed to be 90 degrees. I was hot. We got our air conditioner. So that's the good news. Our air conditioner is installed, it's functioning, and for one full day, we needed that air conditioner. <laughs> and then the weather cooled down and we've had the windows open every day since then. <laughs> so I'm, I'm fine with that. I mean, I would rather have it in case I need it than to not have it and actually need it. So it is what it is. I'm, I'm happy that we have it. So that's my good news. Um, then the other thing I wanted to talk about is I, I recorded my first video on a Monday, published it the following Friday. Today I'm recording on a Tuesday. So it's been four days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Yeah. It's been about four days since the release of my first video. And I would say the response is lukewarm. Um, I have three subscribers. I suspect they're all family members. <laughs> and I had one commenter and, um, and she's not even related to me. I'm, I'm impressed by that. Um, then uh, what I was thinking about is how can I get more engagement? Which I know that a lot of people when they have YouTube channels, they will give some sort of that they want people to 
comment about and that will give them more engagement on YouTube which you know pushes them up in the algorithm and makes them seen to more people so that's my plan gonna give you something you can comment about and what I offer now I I don't have a business I don't have anything I can give away um, I'm not a yarn dyer I don't have an Etsy shop I got nothing I'm here doing an experiment for the summer so what I have is my YouTube channel so anyone who comments below with glows and grows for me will get a shout out on next week's episode so I will be publishing this on Friday June 10th I think it is and anyone who comments on this video between that Friday and the following Tuesday so that's I think the 14th I will be shouting out to thank you for commenting on this video <laughs> so when I say glows and grows here's what I mean a glow would be you're doing this well a grow would be you could be a little bit better on this so let's say you think my volume is too low a grow would be maybe you could use a microphone um a glow would be hey i like how you put those pictures up in the corner something like that so um and you know maybe you don't like the pictures that could be a grow i don't know um so that is my call out to you so anybody who wants to help me get pushed up in the algorithm and help me grow my channel please comment below with your glows and your grows and that's all i have for this week so i want to thank you again for watching and i hope you come back next week for more and next week, I'm going to say this, next week I'm probably not going to have as much completed because this coming weekend I have an obligation that will take quite a bit of my time. So we'll see what gets knitted because I got to, I got to, I'm doing something that I, is going to be heavily focusing on something else so there's just no way to knit while I do this so anyway maybe I'll talk to you a little bit more about that next week you get to hear a little uh, a little piece about my life and and something else that I do that was more pre-pandemic so at any rate again thank you for watching have yourself a great week glows and grows down below and like and subscribe and follow me on Instagram. I'll see you next week.